and welcome to Indian Time. Today, our, um, this is the month of uh, or the month of the Camus. The month of the Camus is a, this is a time where, you know, last show we did was a, we talked about this one at time for the Bitterroot in May, but this June will be the time for month of the Camus. And then later on, uh, after uh, Camus Bake, I hope to bring you some, some photos and some things that takes place during the Camus Bake. But uh, this is a, the month, the time usually when the Camus is already after, you know, after it blooms is when it's ready to dig, not, not, not during the bloom. But after it's all done blooming, then you go out and dig the Camus. Uh, it's a, a, quite a process to, to cook the camas. It's a, it's a three-day process um, to uh, bake in, in the ground. So uh, when you do that, it's, uh, you, you mix that with shautamkin, uh, with the, with the uh, black tree moss. Those are the part of the ingredients. And when, the, when it's cooked and the moss melts right into the... Uh, to the camas and it bonds together when it cooks. It's, I'll uh, talk a little bit more about it uh, uh, next show when, after we're done baking the camas and I bring some photos with me. But also this time of the year, the, you know, the bark of the lodgepole trees and is uh, all but, you know, easy to peel. So the baskets were made getting ready for the uh, uh, get berry picking and other things. So baskets were were made out of the bark this time of the year because the uh, bark is is easy to peel, you know, off the off the trees. Tipi poles were also uh, gathered at this time of the year. Uh, it's because it's a lot easier to peel than later on in the, in the year. Um, when the when the wild uh, rose blooms, the, the Salish knew that the buffalo were nice and fat, and so there's a lot of activity going on this time of the, the year, getting ready for uh, spring gathering, uh, uh, food, uh, plants, uh, medicines. So it was quite a quite a busy time this time of the year. The uh, place name for this this show will be uh, Momo'o. Momo'o is uh, is what we call um, anaconda now. And Momo is referring to smoke coming out out of the out of something out of the ground uh, in Anaconda, uh, the Warm Springs area, where there's some warm springs, some springs down there, where the uh, steam and the smoke come out look like smoke, and that's what what they called that area around the Anaconda, Warm Springs, and Opportunity Lakes in that area. But now it's a uh, is mostly used referring to the town of Anaconda. Uh, since the uh, construction of the uh, smelter there uh, in the 1900s, and there's a big smokestack, and there was a lot of uh, smoke coming out of that. They also referred that. So today, they kind of, uh, nowadays, we associate them all with the town of Anaconda, but actually, originally, it was referring to the, to the hot springs and warm springs in those areas. So that's what our, our place name of the show is. It's Momo'o, Momo'o. The plant we will talk about um, is, uh, is again, uh, we'll talk about uh, the plant will be Tsekwia, Tsekwia, Tsekwia is uh, referring to the uh, black uh, cottonwood. Tsekwia is referring to something shiny or bright. 
and the, the, the Indian people valued the sap from the tree, uh, this tree more than any other, other, tr other trees. Uh, the sap of the, uh, the bark from the young trees was peeled and, and, and the transparent strips, the cambium were chewed, uh, the sap, it was quite tasty, it was sweet, uh, so it was kind of a treat for people uh, back then. Today, there's a lot of people that still go out and gather and eat the cambium from the black cottonwood. And the, uh, smoke, or the cottonwood is also an ideal wood for smoking foods, like uh, drying meat, um, because it's not um, uh, smoky or pitchy. It got a nice, nice uh, heat to it. And the wood is good for firewood. Uh, it burns clean, it's hot. Uh, so there's a lot of other uses for the black cottonwood other than just the, the cambium. Uh, also, the, uh, there's animals like the rabbits or white-tailed deer uh, eat the tender bark and the twigs and the leaves. Uh, the grouse feed on the, the buds. Uh, so there's a lot of uses for the uh, black cottonwood, not only by Indian people, but by animals and uh, other things that, that depend on it. The animal for this show will be il kosho, il kosho, which is a pig or bacon, il kosho. Um, today, I guess we want to talk, I want to talk a little bit more about the bitterroot feast that we had uh, earlier, and earlier this, in, in May. But first, let me, let me say a few things that uh, in June, this month in June, on the 5th in 1872, the Congress authorized funds for the uh, removal of the Salish people down in the Bitterroot. On the 13th of June in 1882, uh, marked the death of uh, Big Canoe, who, who was a, um, a Kalispell chief, or, Cal or Ponderay chief. On the 23rd of June in 1883, the first rails were laid uh, for Northern Pacific through the Flathead Reservation. Coming up uh, soon in June, um, June 17th through the, uh, uh, I think it's, what is it, it's the week of the 17th anyway, um, will be uh, our cultural language camp down at the Longhouse. Uh, it'll be during the day. Uh, from it, we have an, kind of an, uh, a rough agenda. Um, it's going to start at 8 o'clock in, in the morning, every morning, starting on Monday. And it'll go until um, 8 o'clock, usually about 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, the morning will be set aside from, uh, well, after breakfast at 8 o'clock. Uh, the morning will be set aside for uh, language uh, from about 9 to noon. Uh, there will be different, uh, there will be language for beginners, intermediate, and for those that have been studying language and learning language for a while for the more fluent speakers. Um, in the afternoons we'll have uh, different kinds of uh, projects going, but or we encourage that the teachers will be using words, uh, Salish words for the, all the different uh, projects that we're doing. Also, uh, during the meal time, we'll be using words uh, that pertain uh, to around uh, the meal. So there's a, hopefully there'll be a lot of language, a lot of things going on. We'll have uh, uh, the usual things that we do there. We, this time of the year, getting close to the power. A lot of people want to learn how, know how to make bustles, how to repair bustles, how to make outfits for um, the coming uh, powwows, and they want to dance. There'll be some sewing, some beating, uh, drumming, uh, be some games, there'll be some pouches made, some dolls. Uh, dream catchers, uh, and in, in a couple of the evenings, we're gonna have uh, Tim Ryan come down from the preservation to show uh, flint napping. Uh, 
So there'll be a, a, quite a bit of activity going on throughout uh, the, the whole week of, uh, from the 17th to Monday through Friday. We usually <clears throat> finish up about uh, mid-afternoon on, uh, on, uh, on Friday. So if you plan on attending, <clears throat> excuse me, if you plan on attending, please uh, call the office at 745-4572 and let the secretary know. So we have an idea of how many people are going to be coming so we can prepare for our meals and the supplies that we need. And for those of you that uh, uh, have special projects that you need help with, uh, for instance, if you're making an outfit or if you're making a wing dress or whatever, that you, you need help with moccasins and you're, you're started and you want some help to finish them, bring the, your material with you during the, during the camp and the afternoons we will have time and you can uh, put your uh, material out and some of the teachers there will, will help you in any way they can. So if you have special projects, please bring them uh, because we might not uh, you know, be doing something that you're interested in. And we would like to make sure that everybody is, uh, is doing something. So bring whatever you have, and if not, ask a lot of questions. That's what our teachers are there for. And I'd like to, I guess, get into a little more about our, our past show, the uh, Bitterroot um, feast that we have, which is a uh, the first um, ceremony, I guess, <clears throat> in the in springtime. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the bitterroot is being the first plant that is done every, uh, uh, ready every spring. And that is, becomes important because we, before we go out and dig, we have a feast. And <clears throat> usually everybody has to uh, come in and <clears throat> We have a ceremony before we go out. Uh, but before I get into that, I'd like to take a, a short break here. Um, so we'll be right back. Native Americans cherish their bodies. Good athletes take good care of themselves on the field and in the gym. But what about after the game or the workout? Do you know how to protect yourself from STDs and AIDS? This is real life. It has real consequences. Welcome back to Indian Time. As I said earlier, we want to talk a little bit more about the, the Bitterroot Feast that we just had um, last month in May. The Bitterroot this year was almost done at the usual time, uh, which is uh, uh, about the mid part of May. And last year it was early because of our weather. And I'm hoping that our weather is now going to change back towards uh, the way it used to be in the past. As I, I was very, very um, happy this year because there was uh, so many different uh, new faces at the Bitterroot Feast. Um, we, the Bitterroot Feast is uh, uh, from our office. We have uh, Felicity McDonald who every year uh, kind of keeps an eye on it. She goes out uh, just in, in May or end of June, end of April and first part of May to check, start checking the Bitterroot. And, um, when she says it's ready, that's when we have our feast. Uh, we try to have it within a week and the time it's ready because the bitterroot has a, a short uh, period of time when it's easy to dig and, and uh, to peel. So we're very, um, we're very, uh, 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 we have to be ready when, it, when she says uh, it's ready. And this year when, uh, Felicity came in and she said it was all, she thought it was ready. And then we had to uh, delay once because of uh, uh, a death in the community. Then we went out and had our, start digging our, 
are bitter. But as I said earlier, I was very, very um, happy to see so many new faces, so many kids, so many young people were out there this year to take the Bitterroot, help with the Bitterroot. The way we usually do it is we leave the longhouse about, uh, as soon as we can, about nine in the morning. We go on out to the, uh, to the uh, uh, canvas area where the Bitterroot, just where we went is, uh, we've been going to uh, Sid Cross, his property and past couple of years, past year or so, the tribes purchased this property from Sid Cross who uh, is getting up there in age and is starting to retire. So he sold us to uh, the tribes. Uh, this property uh, was never ever uh, an allotment and from the very beginning, from the opening of the reservation, this land was purchased. Um, by the uh, Cross family, and it has been in their family ever since. So we finally uh, now are in ownership of this property and we'll be going there. There's a couple of pieces of property that the tribe has purchased in the Camas area, so we'll be rotating uh, our, uh, our uh, digs every year with, uh, uh, for the Bitterroot Feast. Um, as I said, uh, this year we had a lot of young people come out to uh, join us. Uh, when we went out, we leave the longhouse at nine o'clock, we get out there. Um, those with diggers will start after the, after the prayer, after the ceremony, uh, we have a prayer which we uh, do. And then uh, the past few years, uh, Agnes Paul has been selecting uh, a young person to uh, do the to dig the first uh, bitter root. A, a young, usually a young girl will be selected to uh, dig the first bitter root, hoping in hopes that she will continue uh, to practice this and continue to to do the the things that uh, uh, her an ancestors have been doing for years. So after the first uh, bitter root is dug and cleaned by, by an elder and then every, all the prayers are done, then everybody goes out and starts digging. Uh, the young people, uh, those with diggers, will start digging and the older people will, will sit and wait and as people dig the bitter root and they'll br bring it back uh, to get, you know, for people to start cleaning. So those with diggers will be digging and those with, that don't have diggers will, will help clean. And this process will go on until uh, the elders or somebody's watching and says, okay, they, when, when they think there's enough uh, bitter dug for the, uh, for the dinner, for the feast, then we call everybody back in that are out there digging. Then everybody comes back in and sits down and then we, everybody starts helping to uh, clean the bitter root. And, and when there's a lot of people, when there's a lot of young people, uh, this process usually doesn't take very long. And everybody sits and digs and cleans. And then when there's enough, there's enough cleaned. Uh, there's there's a water. There's water there. Usually buckets of water um, are brought. And when the bitter root, uh, sometimes coolers of water, and then the bitter root is put in there as they're cleaned, um, being peeled, and cleaned, and then the, when the elders think that there's enough for dinner, uh, they will send somebody back ahead of everybody else with the clean bitter root, and they'll come back to the longhouse with the with the bitter root, and start uh, cooking the uh, bitter root while the rest of the people are still on their way back. As they come back, as, a, as they'll stay there until all the bitter root is cleaned. And then, then we start heading back for the longhouse. And then when we get back to the longhouse, uh, by the time we get back there, the cooks will be already um, boiling up the, uh, the, the bitter root. Uh, some, some of it will be, cooked uh, plain and others will, uh, will be mixed with uh, berries that was uh, 
dried from the season before. Uh, they'll be all, uh, so there'll be a combination of different ways of, of the bitterroot being cooked. And once it's all uh, cooked and ready, then the cooks will let everybody, uh, the, the leaders know, and then everybody is called into the big room in the longhouse to sit down and more prayers and, and more, more talks are given at this time. Uh, the prayers are not only for the bitterroot itself, but it's, it's for all the plants, all the foods that are yet to come in this, this year. Because the bitterroot is the first uh, bitterroot that is done, uh, everybody, uh, all the rest of the plants uh, are kind of included in the prayers that we do for the bitterroot and the bitterroot feast. And that is for an abundance, uh, we pray for an abundance of, for food um, that everyone uh, will, will get their uh, plants and food that they need for, for this coming, coming winter. Because everybody uh, that gathers food is basically it's for the winter months. Uh, that's the tradition a long time ago because uh, life um, years ago was not like it is today. It was it's a lot harder and survival depended on how well uh, you went out and gathered uh, the foods and plants, uh, both uh, uh, for medicine and once you got all of this uh, supplies uh, dried and stored, uh, you were all set for the winter. Then you could sit back during the winter months when you weren't able to do anything in the cold and the snow, and then you wait out the winter, uh, and hoping that you had enough food gathered that lasts you uh, for you and your family to, to get back again to the spring where uh, when the, uh, the bitterroot is uh, is all ready and done. Then the whole process starts again. First, you go out, you dig the bitterroot, you dry the, you know, you get your food, su your supply of bitterroot, and then the next follows the next important food is the camas, which uh, is in June right now. Uh, the camas is in bloom, as I said earlier. After the camas is done blooming, then it's ready to be dug. Then you go out there and dig, dig, dig the camas. Then for the rest of the year, uh, you're, you're, you're looking at uh, the berries that are coming, the, the choke cherries, uh, the uh, sarvis berries, the huckleberries, or some of the, the main food uh, berries that you gather and store for the winter months. But also, you're looking at uh, gathering at the same time all of the uh, medicinal plants that you'll need uh, for the winter or for next coming year. Uh, so you're following the seasons as time goes on. Uh, you, you follow the season from season and the, the, the seasons of the plants. As they're ready, you have to be ready to get out there and gather and dig these, uh, these uh, plants, both uh, medicinal and food. Uh, because if you don't do your part in, in getting the food and the plants that you need for the winter, then you'll suffer uh, in the, in the uh, winter months. So it was very vital that everybody did their part in the tribe or in the family. Um, everybody did their part when the time for gathering, uh, when it was time to gather, everybody went out and did their part to make sure that uh, they would survive through the winter months. Also back then, um, there were times when people went on winter hunts, uh, that was the buffalo hunts, when there was still an abundance of buffalo, they would, they would do winter hunts and they would go east of the mountains and spend the winter out there. Uh, and only those that were hardy and, and strong were, went along on these winter hunts because uh, life out there in the plains was very, very harsh uh, with the wind, and the cold, and the snow. Uh, so only those that were um, strong were uh, allowed to go to, on these winter hunts and then they would come back in the springtime. A lot of times that was good timing because people that didn't have uh, 
<clears throat> we're running out of food here, meat. Um, these, you know, the hunters would get back and with a fresh supply of meat. So that went on until the disappearance, uh, the buffalo disappeared in the late 1800s. But again, gathering food uh, was, a, was a must, was something that every, everybody did. Gathering the black tree moss, um, gathering uh, medicine for colds, uh, a lot of time was spent. Uh, <clears throat> and then coming up after um, June, July, the month of July will be coming around. That was kind of a break time, I guess, after your uh, springtime, you go out there and you're gathering your first, kind of like your first uh, season of plants, you go out there and gather. And then the season of July would come around. About that time, uh, people would get together, they would take a break, they would all gather, and they would celebrate, you know, they'd relax, they would have fun, it was drumming, dancing, and all of this was a time to relax before uh, going to the next phase of their food gathering. So after they broke, after they rested in July, after they celebrated, then people went out again in the directions to, to gather food. So it was a, it was a year-long process that you, you, you followed the uh, seasons of the plants. When it was ready, you had to be ready. So people were uh, very busy, and now we have uh, July uh, powwow comes around. It kind of coincides with the, the white man's uh, Independence Day, but um, actually at that time, uh, back then, it was not on that specific day that people uh, took the time to, to celebrate. But now it, things have changed, and it, to make coincide with the white man's celebration, we have uh, selected and, and have our powers on the 4th of July here too. So with that, I'm glad that I'm glad you joined me for the show. I hope you join me again uh, on our next show. Hope we'll talk a little bit more, hopefully, about our language camp. Again, the, the month this month is Swedish uh, month of the Camus. Momo is the place name of Anaconda. El uh, Kosho is an animal for the month, with pig or bacon. Tsekwe is the uh, plant, or the, which is a black cottonwood. Lemlum chpesia pisnukskredli chest chalchal.